are a blended family. We 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 are a blended family. And we are a blended family. Hi, we're Doctors Larry and Carol Snap. We're glad to have you with us today. Okay. Blended Families Week 10 of 12. This one is Forgiveness and Acts of the Spirit. All right. Well, let's just start with who needs to forgive? Well, the person who was offended by somebody, they have to forgive whoever did it. God has to be included in that because we sin against him. He has to forgive us. And then the one who actually did the sin, they have to go through that confession process and everything, but they have to be able to forgive themselves. They have to get forgiveness, but they have to forgive themselves. So pretty much everybody, (laughs) right? Well, I was telling the guys the other night at the Dream Center, forgiveness is mandatory. Reconciliation is optional. It's great if you can. But God doesn't say you have to reconcile with people. But he does say you have to forgive. Otherwise, he won't forgive you. Right? So that, that's why it's mandatory. If you don't, he doesn't. And if you're not forgiven, I think you're taking a big chance of ending up in the place you don't want to be. <laughs> right? Okay, so now we're, we're talking about uh, two different kinds of sorrow. There's godly sorrow where you're sorry you sinned against God, so you know you did something wrong, and that was a sin, and that was a sin against God. If we look at Psalms 51, that's where David is basically rebuilding his vertical relationship with God because he knew he sinned against God. He even says in the, in the, in the Psalm that against you and you alone have I sinned. Right? So sin is something we do against God. Now, that's like one category. Okay, we do things that we're not supposed to do. It hurts other people a lot of times. Sometimes, uh, let's see if I can remember this. This was from just yesterday at Frank's. uh, Perception is always under attack by deception. Think about that. Our perception of what's going on is being constantly attacked by deception. So Satan is always trying to mess with us. See, that's part of the spiritual warfare thing. So there's godly sorrow, which ultimately leads to repentance because you're you're sorry you did what you did, and you know it's wrong. So as, as we look at uh, our vertical relationship here, sin creates a roadblock in our vertical, right? Now, if we go through the process of rebuilding our vertical, we first thing we have to do is just confess that we did something wrong. We have to own it. We ha- I did that, you know. And then we have to repent, or it says that leads to repentance, that repentance is like understanding that what you did was wrong and you really don't want to do that again. So it's, it's changing the mind. It's like a U-turn. So you're going this way. No, nah, I don't want to go that way. I'm going to go back this way. And then after you confess and repent, then you ask God for his forgiveness and he is faithful to forgive you. And then you have to forgive yourself, Right? So that rebuilds your vertical here. Because then the sin is gone. God has removed that. That's that's what he does. He is faithful to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. (coughs) So the sin is gone. To God, it's like it never happened. I think... That's, that's something we need to get because when God forgives us, it's like it never happened. 
Satan keeps reminding us that it happened. God's like, what? I don't, I don't remember you doing anything. Satan is like, oh, I remember. You know, <laughs> hey, you remember that thing you did? You know, he's constantly throwing your past in your face. So confess, repent, receive God's forgiveness, and then forgive yourself. And then the, that whole sin thing, whatever it was, it's like it, it's gone. Part of what God does, though, here like Psalms 103, 8 through 12, it talks about how God is merciful. He is slow to anger, so he's got patience, long-suffering. But he removes our transgressions as far as east is from west. So I like to draw this up here. Uh, never really thought about it. I mean, I, okay, so east from west, that's pretty far, you know. But I heard somebody describe it one time, and it really made sense to me, that if you go north so far, then you hit the North Pole, and if you keep going, now you're going south, right? So from north to south is a finite distance. That's pretty far, but there is a limit to how far that is. If you go east around this way, you never hit west. You're always going east. So that's an infinite distance. So you'll never catch up to west if you're going east, right? And that, <laughs> just that example, just, oh, uh, duh. Okay, that's why it's east from west and not north from south, okay? So, and, and there's another scripture, I, I don't remember the chapter and verse right off, but it, it, it talks about how God puts, the, you know, he like throws our sins into the depths of the ocean. Uh, in the deepest part of the ocean, that's like the pressure is so great that we would never survive in that kind of depth. It would just crush anything that's down there. So that's where God puts it, where we can't get to it. But he also puts up a no fishing sign. When he throws it in the water, he doesn't want us going after it. Right? We need to let go of this stuff. Right? We need to understand when when we have created, committed a sin, okay, God knows we're going to do that, but he is faithful to forgive it. He is also faithful to forget it. Satan never forgets anything we do. He is constantly throwing our past in our face. That's really all he has, is our past. He has no idea what God has for our future. He just knows God has one, and he wants to mess it up. That's it. But he knows what we've done wrong. And the things that have been done to us that were hurtful, right? So, God is merciful, slow to anger, removes our transgressions. Just, it's like it never happened. Okay. Sometimes forgiveness is easier to do for yourself when you know it's just between you and God. It's when other people know what's going on. <laughs> you know, when it's public. Right? Um, oh, I, I think I forgot that one. I talked about godly sorrow. I didn't talk about worldly sorrow. But we see that all the time in the news. People are sorry they got caught. They're not really sorry they did what they did. They're just sorry they got caught. Right? Godly sorrow leads to repentance. Worldly sorrow just creates shame. So now you got that hanging around your neck, and it's out in public. Now what do you do with it? Well, <laughs> you go back to here. But if, for people that are lost, they don't have that. What do they do? They start drinking, they start using drugs, they commit suicides, all that kind of stuff just because of the shame, and which is what the enemy wants. He wants to destroy our lives. But sometimes it's easier to forgive yourself when it's just between you and God. Nobody else knows. You confess it to him. It's just between the two of you. But when there's other people out there in the world that, you know, it all gets exposed, uh, you know, and this is what God wants. He wants us to confess our sins right away. Otherwise, it's like, if you don't confess it, I'm going to expose it. Now, you may get away with it for a while, but sooner or later it'll be out in the world. 
out for everybody to know. So if, if you don't want it to get out there, <coughs> confess it pretty quick. Offense. Uh, I highly recommend The Bait of Satan by John Bevere. It's an awesome book. Uh, a lot of what I teach in this class kind of came from that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but it was very interesting to me how he described how the enemy wants especially the body of Christ, to get offended by other people in the body. Now, it's, we're not really talking about the world here. We're talking about people in the church that get offended by other people in the church. It happens all the time, yeah. right? <laughs> Probably more so. Yeah, it's people... Yeah, people leave churches and go to a different church because the church, somebody in the church, offended them. Or they just quit, yeah. All right. Uh, there was a story about a guy that was marooned on a desert island in the Pacific somewhere, you know, just all by himself on this little island. And he finally got rescued, and this boat comes along and everything, and he, he was, you know, he built some buildings and shelters and things, and so he was kind of proud of him. He wanted to show the people how he managed to survive for so long on this little island all by himself. And he's like, you know, well, this is my little house over here. And this building over here, this is the church that I go to. And then they, well, what's that other building? Over there? Well, that's the church I used to go to. <laughs> <laughs> he's the only person, he got offended at his own church. He ticked himself off, right? But... The way to look at offense, and I mean, we all know people that do stuff we don't like. We know they're going to do it. I, I'm out in traffic all day. People are always doing stupid stuff. Now, I could, I could be a, a hot mess by the end of the day if I let every little thing that people did offend me. Mm -hmm. right? Well, I have a thing in my car that says, too blessed to be stressed. Yeah, it's got the cross on there. It's just a little, one of those little pin things that you could. And if you look at offense as, you know, like uh, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was praying, you know, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, your will. That cup, if you think about the cup, that was a cup of offense. It was the sin that he was going to have to drink, Right? If you look at somebody offending you as something tangible, right? here's a cup of offense. I said something to you, and you didn't like it, so there's that cup of offense sitting there now. What are you going to do with it? You going to pick it up and drink it? Then what? Well, now you have to go through this process over here, because now you own that. If you don't pick it up, you don't own it. So the whole point here is, don't pick it up. Okay, yeah, if somebody threw a rock, they hit you, it hurt. But do you pick up the rock and throw it back? No, as much as you want to. You forgive them for doing something that hurt. Because you do not want to deal with the offense. Now, I, I like to use the, uh, the parable of the uh, prodigal son. You know, he basically told his father, you're dead to me, give me my inheritance, I'm going to go off and have a good time. And so he goes off for a while, who knows how long, it probably wasn't all that long, but he blew the whole thing. And then he ended up in a pigsty, which is the worst place ever for a Jewish kid in a pigsty, and he, he finally got to the end of himself and said, I, I can't take this anymore. I, I'm going to go back to my dad's house. I'm just going to be one of the slaves, but at least I'll be at my dad's house, you know. And he, he went back, and the father happened to be out, and he saw him coming down the road from a ways off. He didn't have to stop and think at that moment Am I going to forgive this kid or not for what he did? All right. Now, this was probably a period of months 
So he, he forgave him right away. But I, I like people to consider the, the concept, at least, of pre-forgiveness. When, when you know you're going to have to deal with some people that you don't like, they're just constantly in your face, they're saying stuff that's negative about you or just the world in general, you know that you're, you're going into that situation a lot of times. Not always, but a lot of times you know ahead of time you're going to get into a situation where somebody's going to get you upset. Forgive them ahead of time. So when they do it, it's like, well, it's over there. Uh, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. All right. Oh, I get it. You're the idiot. You don't know what you're doing. I'll forgive you ahead of time. <laughs> All right. But if you can see an offense as an object that's sitting on the ground or on a table and you have the option of picking it up or not. And it's, it's not always easy. But if you have that mindset that, I know people are going to offend me, but it's Satan doing it. These people don't understand what they're doing. They're being used as a tool in the hands of the enemy. Right? Satan's out there with a screwdriver, and he's like putting it in somebody else's hand, and they're poking you with it. But it's not really them, it's Satan doing that. So you have to identify the, en the real enemy here. You know, like in marriage, it's, it's not your spouse. It's the enemy using your spouse as a tool. And that's so important. But if you can visualize the words that somebody said or the actions that somebody did that were hurtful as a thing and it's not them, it's so much easier to not pick it up. Now, uh, the Bible tells us that if we, are, if, if we forgive those who offend us, we will be forgiven. If we forgive, whatever that is, is released. So it's, it's gone. But if we do not forgive, then we retain whatever that is. Now we own it. And we have, we're going to carry it around in our backpack, which we forgot to bring today. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we forgot a couple of things today. Uh, as important as this class is, I'm surprised we forgot it. But um, Romans 12, 19, Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. We do not return evil for evil. Uh, a friend of ours yesterday who just lost his son was talking about this very thing he could be totally upset about what happened to his son who was killed by someone else or he could totally put this in the hands of God and let God deal with them that's that's not easy but he understood this he has a very good vertical relationship he knows he will see his son again. But he put the whole thing in God's hands, and within a day this kid turned himself in. And he even prayed with the parent of that guy, and I mean, it, he, <laughs> he blew people away in the courthouse. You know, it was, it was amazing. But he understood that God is the one who returns or gets justice for us mm -hmm. you know the the justice of well no the anger of man does not produce the the righteousness of God yeah I'm getting a couple of them confused there but this this one's tough because you know when somebody throws a brick and they hit you you want to pick it up and throw it back that's just our, our nature, you know, our flesh. We want to get even, we want to get even now, right? Well, the brick is handy. <laughs> but Satan allowed the timing with Frank just before we were to kick off that men's group that him and his son were really looking yeah, for helping you know, to teach. I mean, there, there's so many things involved in, like, right. in this. I mean, it's, it's devastating for him. But he was so looking forward to doing some other stuff for God. Mm -hmm. and with then, his son, with that son. Yeah, and 
Satan was like, oh, I don't think so. But God always has a purpose in all this stuff. We, some of it makes no sense to us. But God never wastes our pain. He always has a purpose in everything. And, you know, all things work together for, for good. So something good will come of it. Uh, who knows? Maybe that good thing is that kid gets saved. Who knows? And, the, and his family. And the family. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. God doesn't waste our pain like he said. That's right. So be aware of what offense really is. It's Satan trying to get the body of Christ to go against itself. So uh, forgiveness, like I said in the beginning, forgiveness is mandatory because if we do not forgive, we are not forgiven. And in this book, there was a, a little a bit about some surgeon that <clears throat> uh, uh, like he had a heart attack or something. He was in the hospital and you know, it was on, like on the operating table and he kind of like, you know, they, he died on the table. But then they got him back a little bit later. But while he was gone, it's talking about how he had a little tour of heaven and he had a tour of hell. <clears throat> but that short amount of time that he was browsing through hell, he saw his mother-in-law in there. And he says, I don't get that one because she's a Christian. Why is she in there? Well, she had unforgiveness in her heart. And I was like, oh, you know. So, <clears throat> yeah. I would just like to go back and add something really quick to the offense part. I know we talk sure. a lot about Satan using uh, some Christian people to just, you know, let's just say just a simple argument as offense. Mm -hmm. And we always say forgive because we know that Satan's using that person. Mm -hmm. I would like to stress and point out that us as a person, including myself, if to be able to recognize that Satan is using us, mm -hmm. as you know, at that moment, just how Satan get behind us, and we need to immediately recognize that because if not, we become, we become his tool continuously. Right. Yeah. So we get to be one of his favorite tools. For the person that's being attacked to offend, but us as a person to recognize that as well that we're being used. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and we can become his favorite tool. Yes. <laughs> But, uh, <clears throat> see, that, that's the thing. Christians are often some of the worst examples of what it's supposed to be to be a Christian, right? <clears throat> but that's because we're easily used as tools. And Satan is constantly attacking us as individuals. He's attacking marriages, especially because that's one of God's best institutions. If he can mess up families, he can mess up the kingdom. So, uh, beware of picking up the bricks of offense. Normally, we have a backpack. We pass. I have. Uh, your purse is about as heavy as the backpack. <laughs> <laughs> so that that'll work. <laughs> yeah, but and I even did this at the church a while back, where you know, our pastor came in with a backpack full of rocks. You know, we, we say bricks, but rocks, something heavy, right? Every time you pick up an offense, it's a brick or a rock that you end up putting in your backpack. And if you don't forgive, it's just another brick and another brick and another brick. And pretty soon you're <laughs> going to fall over backwards because it's just so heavy. But that's the thing. And, and in the old Roman days, if somebody committed a murder, they'd strap the dead body to the guy. That was his punishment. He And... You know, after a while, you get who knows what kind of disease from all that, and then you die. So that was kind of a very slow death sentence. But beware of picking up bricks of offense. Uh, there's a lot of times, you know, we've th our parents have done things, they've said things, and we're still not forgiven them. <coughs> so beware of that. Identify those areas where you may need to forgive something. Uh, what we're doing now is passing around some balloons. No? We're going to do the purse. <laughs> the bricks in the purse. Right? Okay. Uh, where this came from, uh, when we were writing the curriculum, our niece back in Oklahoma was going through a discipleship program. Psst. Come up here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> All right. Um, and um, she was asked to um, write a list or to gather rocks to put them in a, a bag. Everybody that she needed to still forget that she had them again. And she, I'm good with that. I have no need to get anybody. I don't have anything that's on my mind or that's bothering me. I'm fine. And this program, I guess, was like a three-month program. And then one night, God woke her up about midnight, and she's out in the backyard collecting rocks, putting them in a bag. And she comes back in with the bag half full of rocks. And she had to write names or offenses on those rocks. And the deal was she could not take them out of that bag until she forgave those people or forgave that offense. And it took her not a long time because she knew I got to get rid of these real quick to finish my discipleship program. But that's where we got the idea when we were writing the book. And we said, because all the people we counsel, people would be pointing out, well, if you just fix him, I'd be fine. Or if you just fix her, I'd be fine because I'm perfect. You know, it's the other one. And we said, we ought to get backpacks it was about the same time that Kim was going through that, and put bricks in the backpack and then swap them and let them hold them and feel them, and nine times out of ten they were just as heavy if not a little heavier. And so that's where our idea came from, and then, I don't know, a couple years later, Pastor Luke's doing that on the stage, and he must have seen our book, <laughs> but he's using rocks. But of course, that's what Kim used. Yeah. So it doesn't matter, but it is a really good visual. Now, normally, a woman's purse is very light. Really? <laughs> no. Yeah, I've got a little tiny backpack. It's not me. I don't think should have This is very heavy. So this is going to be your wife's purse. You think she has everything taken care of and nothing's bothering her? There are some things that you maybe need to discuss with her and say, how was your day today? Is there anything that you're going through that I can help you? And a lot of times we just want the men to listen. Not just that, just listen. So get an idea from that from this So while, while they're passing the purse around, uh, Another scripture that's very important in the forgiveness arena is 2 Corinthians 10.5, where it says, Take every thought captive as unto the Lord. Now, part of, you know, and, and we're going to get into this, I think, next week. We're going to be talking about the differences between responding to something and reacting to something. Offense is that thing. If there's an offense going on, you're either going to respond to it or you're going to react to it, right? But the scripture tells us to take every thought captive as unto the Lord. So you hear a lot of times somebody says, well, on second thought, well, that's what they're doing. They had a thought, and then they thought again, and they thought better of it, right? So if you don't, if you take the time and, you know, it could just be a split second because thought processes are pretty fast. But if you take every thought captive and you, you have your Jesus glasses on, and we show them every you know, big pair like this, and you're looking through your surroundings through those filters of the Word of God, now you're taking thoughts captive, you're running them through that filter, and what's the best thing I can do to help the situation? You know, if there's a fire, somebody's starting a fire, are you going to put gas on it or water? Or some things you don't want to pour water on, but you know what I mean. <laughs> like a grease fire, you don't put water on that. You need a fire extinguisher. But uh, take every thought captive because so much of the spiritual warfare stuff that we're dealing with is in the mind. We're to re transform, be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Okay. Um, so we just did, sort of did the bricks in the backpack thing. Uh, forgiveness is for you.
It's not for somebody else. We hear it all the time. Oh, I can never forgive them for what they did to me. Why not? This is Christian Living Radio. There's a lot of times people don't realize they hurt you. You know, they weren't intending to. You just picked up the brick and made made a brick out of it, right? So they're not going to come and say, I'm sorry, because they didn't know they did anything. But you're going to be upset because you picked up the brick, and now you own the brick. So forgiveness is for you. Isaiah 43, 25 tells us that God forgives us for his sake, not our sake. He can't deal with our sin, so he has to forgive it and forget it so that it's like it never happened. If he was keeping track of everything we did, we probably wouldn't be here. (laughs) He would have never messed with the ark. (laughs) He would have just wiped us all out. This is where we do a forgiveness exercise with the balloons. And this came about when I was happy to have... um, Therapy, I guess. To I had when when my um, life fell apart for the second time, finding out that um, my three kids had been molested by my husband. I never did I never I thought I could take care of Abby fine. And then years later, Larry and I are married, and the kids are going off to getting married or going to college. Then I started having a meltdown, and that's when it was pointed out to me, you never got a meltdown, you need to be in therapy. So I went to see this lady that, thank God she was a Christian, because we were not saved at that time, if I remember right. Not yet. And um, she told me, take balloons, and write on the balloons, people's names, names of offenses, and take them outside and let the balloons go up to God where they should be anyway, because she'll get revenge. And as I say, I didn't even know she was a Christian, and uh, we were not saved at that time. But just for telling me that, my heart just felt so much more released and the pressure gone. And wow, that's really powerful. So when Larry and I started writing curriculum and everything, and we came to the the beginning thing, I said, Larry, we don't know what to do with that thing that he did. He could do those balloons that, um, I think it was Nancy, the lady gave, that um, she gave us wrong one. I said, that is so vitally important. And this has saved so many people's life. It's turned it around. It's been able to get rid of a lot of stuff they have been holding on to. Because like Larry said, a, a lot of people that do things some of them know they've done things to hurt you, but they don't care. They've moved on to something else. They forgot. They just, you know, chalked it off. Okay, well, I did what I wanted to do. I said what I wanted to do uh, or what I wanted to say, and now I'm going on with my life. Well, we're still all offended for it. But the point is when we, and we're going to go around to everybody here, it's going to take them around, and you have to either put, you have to put something on it, you either put a name on there of somebody you don't think you've um, forgiven completely or an offense, and then we're going to go outside and we're going to release them and give them to God. We're going to let them go. Okay, so she's going to come around to do that. So let me just tell you one little story of a guy that was a single who came into a Beyond the Woods class. He wrote a couple things. And then the class, everybody went outside and we released the balloons. And after the class that that night, um, when we're going outside and going on our way, his balloon was still stuck in the tree. (laughs) And he says, God, really? There was one thing he didn't put on that balloon and he should have put it on there. And he couldn't believe that God left his balloon down where he could get it. We didn't know this until several weeks later he admitted it to us. But he took that balloon all the way up to the prayer pavilion because he was going to the prayer meeting up there. And he said, I can, he was talking about all the way. I cannot believe you. You did not release my balloon all the way. I can't believe you did that. <laughs> so he finally wrote on there what he needed to and he let it go. But uh, God knows what your pain is. 
And um, so it, it's going to help a lot when we do that. But that's why we do it. That's where it came from. And we recommend that, you know, there are times, especially with new blended families, there are issues that come up. Maybe once a month, once a year or something, do it with your whole family and let everybody have their turn to do that. Um, and I know um, single gals that have a family have told their kids about it and how it helped them when that was done. And they've gone out and bought the balloons and then later on that month or something, the whole family will, well, I want to write my thing. You know, I got to do this, got to do that. And it's helped the whole family deal. And that's awesome. Whatever works. Yep. I wanted to share that the, about what Jesus tells us that, you know, our business is going to come to us. And so um, forgiveness is the antidote to that. Mm hmm. Right. Yeah, it's, it's not like it's not going to happen. There will be plenty of opportunities to be offended. But. You know, as Christians, the whole point is, what are you going to do with it? Right? And like Karen just said, it's it's required that we forgive those who offend us. And especially spouses. But everybody. You know, like you said, it's forgiveness is mandatory. Reconciliation is optional. You know, there are some people you just need to have a boundary. You know, you, for, you still have to forgive them, but then you put up a boundary because they're toxic. You know, it's just not healthy for you to be around certain people if they're going to constantly being uh, very negative or destructive towards you. Mm -hmm. So. You don't ever keep fighting over and over again. Yeah, and it was really cool yesterday at the wedding that we were at. Um, it was a Hispanic wedding, and uh, the pastor said, they did some things that we had not seen yet, and it was wonderful. But the pastor said to Aunt, um, the gal, she, he said, I know um, he's told you you're perfect and all that, but he said, let me tell you, you're not perfect. <laughs> you are going to make mistakes. And he said the same thing to the guy. He says, I know she's told you you're perfect, but you're not, because you are going to make mistakes, and you're going to upset each other. Mm -hmm. So just know about it ahead of time. Yes. Give yeah. each other grace. Mm -hmm. But I thought, whoa, I've never heard that say right off the bat. That was before they even did the interviews. I mean, got it yeah. right up there. That was really funny. So, uh, wrapping things up over on this side uh, while they're autographing all the balloons. So, forgiveness is for you. God forgives us for his sake. He, he can't be looking at us and still be seeing sinfulness or unrighteousness. Uh, and it's through Christ's blood on the cross that uh, we are cleansed. So we can still have that vertical relationship. There is freedom in forgiveness. Um, if you're holding a grudge, if you're holding on to an offense, your basic, and, and you, you know, especially on the news and everything with all the political stuff that's going on, you can see the results of unforgiveness because there are so many people that are holding grudges against someone else. I mean, our culture today is like, how can I be offended today? They're looking for reasons to be offended so they can be upset and go protest something or, you know, all kind of bad stuff. But there's freedom and forgiveness. If you're letting somebody, if you're carrying that grudge against someone, you're basically let, letting them live in your head rent-free. And you know, like I said, they, there's a lot of people that do things that upset you, but they don't realize that they did it. You know, there are plenty of times when people do stuff deliberately, though. And you still have to forgive that. Um, um, yeah, let's uh, move the camera outside real quick here. So we're stepping outside to release the balloons. Oh, yeah.
And there goes the offenses. Releasing them to God to get his vengeance. And we're not worrying about it. Pretty good. I'm just going to wrap things up here. So we're almost done, and then at the end of this we'll do communion, but that, that'll be after we're done on the recording. Uh, okay, so freedom is in forgiveness. It sets you free. It doesn't set somebody else free. You're forgiving them to set you free. Uh, there's an example we like to talk about, also the, the nail in a wood fence. Uh, from our perspective, we don't want to offend others. As, you know, as much as we can possibly not offend people, we want to try to do that. Um, so if you're speaking some kind of a negative word at someone, that's like driving a nail into a wood fence. Now, you can say, I'm sorry, I really didn't mean to say that. Well, they were offended anyway even though you didn't mean to say that. But when you say, I'm sorry, it's kind of like taking the nail out, right? But there's still a hole there. And that hole needs to get patched. So the only way to patch the, and, and if you, nobody ever says, I'm sorry, and the nail stays in there, after a while it starts rusting, and you get that streak of rust that runs down the wood and all that kind of stuff. But for somebody that says, boom, I don't like you, and I'm, oh, I'm hurt. And then they say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Okay, well, that takes the nail out, but there's still the hole there. Now, we have to forgive, and that brings God into the picture, and God is the one that putties up that hole. Now, you know, <laughs> if anybody's ever puttied a hole in a wood fence, you know, it's, you kind of smear it on there, and it's not real smooth usually. Oh, eh, some people are better at it than others. Same kind of thing with forgiveness. Usually what has to happen is you have to take some sandpaper after it's all set up that now you're going to smooth it out so it's nice and smooth. Otherwise, it's, you can tell there's a glob of putty there. So God comes in. He's, he fills in the hole with the putty, but sometimes he has to take the sandpaper and use it on us to smooth it out before he can paint over it, and then after a while it's like it was never there. All right, so just that example. We had somebody actually come in with some pieces of wood that was teaching the class for us, uh, the Beyond Divorce one, and he had like three pieces of wood, and he uh, had his screwdriver, you know, and zzz, drilled some screws into there, and then he took them out, and okay, there's holes in there. Well, he had different size nails and screws. Yeah, some nails, some screws. And Depending on the offenses, some are bigger than others. Yeah, yeah, right. Some are little bitty ones, some are big ones. But uh, he, he had one piece where some things had been patched, and then he had another one where it had been sanded and painted. And so you can see kind of the progress there. Uh, we already talked about this, Luke 23, 24. Christ was on the cross, and he's basically saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. 
And, and that's really where our, our mind should go first. When somebody does something that we find offensive, we say, Christ, you know, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. People don't get it. Even a lot of Christians don't really get it. And that should be one of the first things that goes through our head is, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's the important part. They know not what they do. If they knew what they were doing, they probably wouldn't do it. Although some would. <laughs> some are just mean. But anyway, so these uh, two bullseyes, that we're talking more about the acts of the Spirit here. But, uh, you know, take every thought captive. That goes into here, too. They're, you know, we're talking about circumstances. They're either going to drive you to do certain things or you're going to try to influence what's going on around you. This side on the left over here is like the works of the flesh. We're talking Galatians 5 is where all that is. There's a big list of works of the flesh. There's a smaller list of fruits of the Spirit. But here on the fleshy side, we have circumstances are on the outside. And the pressure is going towards the center of the bullseye. So you have circumstances which are driving our emotions. They make us feel a certain way. We have feelings about what's going on. But our emotions are driving things. The circumstances are driving our emotions. Our emotions are basically putting us in the flesh, and we're just reacting to the circumstances. So we're the bullseye. We're at the center of this whole thing. Whatever, all this outside influence is impacting us, and we're at the mercy of what's going on. We're not in control of anything. We're at the mercy of our surroundings, and we're in the flesh. So, uh, you know, we'll probably be getting angry, or we're going to go to the bar and get drunk because we don't want to deal with it, or get high, or whatever. Uh, some people, you know, they get angry and they fight back. You know, that, that's a reaction, though. Then over on the other side, it's the same thing. The pressure is going from the outside in, but in this case, we have the Holy Spirit in charge of us. We're not in the flesh. We're following, you know, we're exercising the fruits of the Spirit here. We're taking every thought captive. We're exercising patience, self-control, and, you know, love and peace and patience and all those things. But, so the Holy Spirit is in control, in control of us. We are in control of our emotions. Emotions are still in here, but now we're in charge of them instead of them being in charge of us. Now, we can put some kind of pressure on the circumstances. So we're going to choose to respond to the circumstances through the Holy Spirit so we can have some kind of impact on what's going on rather than just being at the mercy of whatever. Right? So now we may talk about these next week again because it really does fit well with reacting over here and responding over here. It's really the same kind of visual. So probably see that again next week. But this week it's all about forgiveness and how we should respond to what's going on. Uh, I mentioned our Jesus classes. This is what they look like. All right. You have to have filters. You have this, these things allow you to see what's going on in the spirit realm, which is where the battles are. If, if you're not wearing these, you're just seeing things in the flesh, and you're going to be reacting to people who are trying to hurt you, maybe, or just doing stupid stuff. But if you have these on, you can see that they're being used as tools. And then it's a lot easier to deal with what's going on if you're looking at it from a spiritual warfare perspective. So that, these help you see things from that spiritual warfare point of view. All right. Any comments, questions on forgiveness or anything? Danny. Yeah, what's, uh, now does forgiveness have different faces to it? I mean, like, yeah, I let a balloon go, and I can 
emotionally and psychologically and spiritually say, I'm just not picking up that cup of offense again. Is that just one face, or is there like different faces to forgiveness? I mean, is there mm. a, it's a process? Um, yeah, I think it, it's, it's definitely a process. You have to, there's choices you have to make in that process. Uh, one of the things that uh, our pastor Luke here had, had done was he, he came in from the back of the sanctuary with his backpack full of rocks. He had a big cross on the stage, and he was taking the rocks out of the backpack and laying them at the foot of the cross. That's, that's like another visual. Instead of letting the balloons go, you visualize setting a rock at the foot of the, at the, foot of the cross. Well, the whole point was, don't go back and pick up the rock. Right? So you, you have to, and that's why you like to do the balloons and the backpack thing, because you, if you see yourself letting something go, it's, then you've, your mind has seen it, that it, it's gone. Right? So if you don't do something like that, then, then there's that mental struggle with, well, I know it's still there, I didn't really let it go, and things like that. But <coughs> as far as like different faces or phases? Faces. Phases, steps. You know, well, this looks like this looks like forgiveness to me, but this also looks like forgiveness to me. Is there a, just a solid standard where you forgive and you say, you know, I hear this voice trying to bring up and reiterate the past, but I'm just not gonna yeah, over I, the bay. Of, yeah, I I think it's kind of. I mean, it's it's different for everybody, really. It, it, there's like a, a standard of letting it go, turning it over to God, and let Him deal with it, so that you don't own it anymore. And it's it's kind of a it's a spiritual thing, obviously, but it's also kind of a mental thing. Where, uh, like. I, I told my son one time, somewhere in here, I mean, you keep asking God to take something away from you, sooner or later you have to visualize that he took it. Otherwise you're going to still think you have it, right? And if you still think you have it, then you're going to keep asking God to take it, but you don't let him. So there's that spiritual thing where you have to just know that you know certain scriptures that, you know, uh, like the whole east from west thing, that if I'm faithful to confess and repent and get forgiveness and then forgive myself, it's 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 a done deal. Um, I don't know, I'm I'm not sure I'm getting to the where you want to get to though. Okay, I mean I got a better visual understanding of forgiveness now. I'm just wondering, like I said, it's all. Yeah, I mean everybody's gonna go through a. It's the same steps, but it's a different stairway for everybody. And it's a process you may have to do or choose to do the balloon thing or something like it once every few months or something, uh, you know? Because we have uh, known people that say, well, I, I know I did that, but I still feel like I haven't let go. So do the exercise again. If that helps you on the day you did it, then, you know, it's a process. And sooner or later you will be able forgive. Yeah, and I, for me personally, forgiveness is kind of a state of mind. You know, it's, like I said, you know, pre-forgiveness, I know people are going to do stuff. And I halfway expect them to, and I'm more surprised when they don't, <laughs> you know. But I, I, I love the thing about don't pick it up, right? I know people, people are going to say stupid stuff, they're going to do stupid stuff, but if I don't pick it up, I don't have to worry about it. If, if I pick it up, now I've got to worry about it. Because it's like some, a spirit comes on me sometimes, like this dark spirit. Well, like spiritual it warfare. Up, it, it opens up all these cars, right? And then, you know, uh, things start to look that way again. Right? Mm -hmm. Everything, all the cosmetics are different now. Right. Well, it's, you know, like Carol said, it, forgiveness is something you're going to have to do frequently, right? Even for old stuff. Uh, you know, you have to get this transformed to think a certain way. 
And the enemy does not want you to get there. So there's going to be a constant battle with the past versus the future. And Satan, get behind me. I know it's you. You know, Jesus, would you answer that for me? You know, you know those kind of things. But forgiveness is what sets you free. And whatever that is for you. I mean, it's going to look different for everybody. But it's un, there's an understanding down in the heart that, okay, I know that I'm free from that. I, I gave that to God a long time ago. I don't have to carry that. That brick is out of my backpack. Last year when we did the class for intro, Kelly and I went home and uh, we did the process because I had some forgiveness you know, uh, and we, we took the balloon. What we did differently is on one side we wrote on the balloon, forgive me for blah, 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 blah. And then thank you for bringing this into, you know, certain things, the joy mm-hmm. things that we felt, you know, we wrote on the other side. That's cool. A little morning, you literally cry because you're in private, you know, and maybe this wouldn't help you because it's like going through, you know, a little, you, you mourn that, that incident. And, and I did all the crying, up, and it literally let it go, and it never came back to mind. But it, when I said, forgive me for not doing this and for not doing we have in that process I learned to forgive myself as well for not doing those things and then right. for the joy that you brought into my life, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. And then literally seeing that balloon going up and then there was I guess there was um what would you call it when it was my little pup actually, he had cancer. And I used to love to take him hiking on this mountain, and that balloon just went up, and it ended up you know, at the top of the mountain. And to me, that was confirmation that hey, yeah. you have to find that confirmation somewhere. Those right. Confirmation. Yeah, that's that, good. Hey, all is forgiven. All is well. <coughs> yeah, God's. You know, I got you. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Now, something else that just came to mind is, you know, there, there's sins of commission, and sins of omission. And as you were describing that, I was just thinking that there's a lot of times where we pick up a brick that we threw. Just it's like we threw it at ourselves. You know, we have to be careful about not condemning ourselves for things we should have done but we didn't. Right? I mean, that's in there too. Thank you all for joining the Blended Families Ministry Program today. This ministry was created to help blended families learn how to use biblical tools that will help you thrive. We are Drs. Larry and Carol Snap, and we invite you to listen to our weekly shows here on ChristianLivingRadio.com and to visit our website, BlendedFamiliesMinistry.org, to learn more about the ministry and all that we do. Thank you, and God bless. Christian living, Christian living. Christian Christian Living Living Radio. Radio. Spreading the good news of Jesus Christ 24-7. Our goal is to bring you a life-changing word through music and diverse programming like the one you're listening to now. Pastor Kenyatta Goins is the visionary of Christian Living Radio, and he's dedicated to the idea that Christians should even have a more prominent presence in the marketplaces. Maybe you need prayer for yourself and or your family. Maybe for a friend. We'd be privileged to stand in the gap for you. If you're listening to this broadcast, click on the Contact Us tab and send us your prayer request. We'd also like to hear from you if you have something on your mind or just give us some feedback. We support many ministries, so maybe you'd like to make a one-time or a monthly recurring donation. We believe that when you sow into these ministries, you'll indeed be blessed. And of course, if you sow into this show in particular, we believe that it's a blessing for you, so please consider sponsoring us. There's a special area under the Donate tab where you can send your monetary gift or call 520-812-6363. That's 520-812-6363 to receive more information about sponsorship. Thank you.